Uh, not sure if you traveled over the 4th of July holiday weekend, but if you did, you may have noticed that gas prices continue to remain uh, historically low here when we think about the busy summer travel season, especially as more Americans hit the road, as we've highlighted here, the road trip coming back as more Americans shun air travel. And for the first time in 10 weeks, the national average price of gas has fallen with a drop of 1.2 cents per gallon over the last week. Now we're down near $2.17 a gallon. That according to Gas Buddy data. Uh, and I want to bring on the head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, Patrick DeHaan, that uh, joins us now. And Patrick, I mean, when we look at this, it's interesting because we were talking about uh, how gas prices were so cheap, how that might spur demand uh, for gas as travelers hit the road. But what have you seen how demand might not necessarily mean all that much when you think about supply issues, the rising cases now, and how Americans might even be rethinking uh, road travel? Yeah, you know, you make a good point. There may be some shifting away from jet fuel as people stay off planes. Uh, and maybe move more towards uh, vehicles this summer. So you'd expect gasoline demand to be good, all things considered. Uh, but the recent resurgence in some of the nation's largest gasoline-consuming states, California, Texas, and Florida, does now show early signs that demand across the country is inching lower again. In fact, preliminary data that we have from our Pay With Gas Buddy card showed that Sunday demand nationally was down about 4%. And that's largely behind why oil prices have maybe stalled around $40 a barrel and had finally given uh, a pause in the upward climb in gas prices that you mentioned with prices now averaging uh, 217 down a penny versus a week ago. Yeah, and that's, and that's noticeable there as we talk about how much the rise in coronavirus fears here might be attributed to that uh, kind of stalling out here around the 220 mark uh, since we were all the way down at, what, 174 uh, back in April. So, I mean, when you think about that, what would you say is is kind of the percentage that should be con attributed to maybe fears around coronavirus in some of those states, maybe telling people, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stay home instead? Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly think COVID-19 is, is really in the driver's seat here with where prices go. Obviously, OPEC has come in and cut oil production in response to the reduction in demand. But where we go forward here with those cuts is still going to be a product of how quickly Americans get back in their vehicles. And obviously, there's a little bit of a pause here, it seems like, as, as cases start to uh, rise again. Uh, but we don't know how long live that will be. And it's certainly not a surprise as some states pause their reopenings. Uh, Americans may not necessarily be deliberately staying home. But if business are, are shutting back down, if bars and restaurants may be closing again, of course, there's less destinations for them to visit anyway. So I think where we go from here, it's really going to be dependent on recovery in those uh, harder hit areas. Yeah, and for, I mean, uh, when we're talking about timing of all this as well, obviously, the summer season, uh, a very busy time for people to be driving around there. And you've noted uh, that the two holidays we've had such far have seen the lowest prices since 2004, uh, including Fourth of July, which we just wrapped up. Uh, what would you expect for Labor Day there as well as that kind of marks, you know, the third holiday in this string in summer travel and whether or not uh, Americans should be expecting, again, a record low gas prices there? Well, I think where we go for Labor Day is going to be a function of if we can improve on the current 20-year deficit, excuse me, 20% deficit that we have in gasoline demand. Uh, and it will, uh, really will uh, depend on if there is recovery in some of those large gasoline-consuming states, California, Texas, and Florida, uh, the latter two obviously more affected right now. If we start to see some improvement there, if we do get back to some level of reopening, that could help spur gasoline demand in those areas and could lift the national average slightly, um, you know, another 15 to 25 cents maybe, uh, but that still could set us up for a pretty positive finish to the summer in terms of some of the lowest Labor Day prices also since 2004. But again, really, uh, this is all really contingent on where we go from here with the coronavirus situation. And lastly, I mean, when we think about cheap gas prices, you would expect, I guess, some of these um providers there, anything about the actual uh, companies here in the gas space might actually be complaining about that. When you look into uh, the data there, the difference between the price Americans are actually paying at the pump and the wholesale price of gasoline, that gap does swing here when you have this kind of volatility. And right now, according to IHS Market, Wall Street Journal uh, reporting on this, averaging about 41 cents a gallon during the first half of the year, that would be the highest six-month average on record. Uh, what's your take on, on maybe how this could be a win-win as American drivers out there are benefiting from cheap prices and also the companies providing the gas there at the pump also uh, enjoying what they're seeing so far? 
Well, you know, uh, when you look at the, the chain, the upstream, the downstream, usually it's the downstream, the gas stations that are not really beneficiaries of, of what you see with volatility. But of course, the last three months, uh, as oil prices plummeted, that has opened up retailers for some record margins. Now, of course, they've had uh, to do more with far less traffic. I mean, at one point, some stations were seeing 50 to 70 percent deficits in gasoline consumption. So that additional margin helped them keep the doors open. Uh, but, you know, you mentioned the volatility there from state to state, 41 cents. Um, it, it goes to show that motorists can always save by shopping around and, and the volatility in markets now um, you know, it's calmed down, but uh, back in April and May, we've never seen a wider spread between uh, the cheapest prices in town and the most expensive. So certainly an opportunity there for uh, motorists to save money, uh, but that certainly was helping the bottom line of those retailers while hurting the upstream, the oil companies, the oil producers. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, right now, Americans definitely themselves not complaining, myself included, after seeing a, a very, very cheap Prices at the pump. But Patrick DeHaan, Gas Buddy, Head of Petroleum Analysis, appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.